Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach, and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a queer relationship. I'm here to help validate and support those who are or have been in my shoes and to help spread awareness of what these kinds of relationships can look like. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a recent difference that I sort of uh, like had a light bulb moment for um, about when I was in my not so happy, but not abusive marriage versus when I was with my abuser. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dive into that in a minute, but first I will give my struggles and success this week. Um, a struggle for me is that I got sick again. I had my second, like pretty major sickness, um, of 2023 and it is now, uh, February 4th as I'm recording this. So yeah, second bout of like fever and being stuck in bed for several days and all that stuff. So it's been, um, quite the struggle over here. Um, a success is that I <laughs> am having a me day today. Sometimes you just got to keep it simple. Today is a me day and I woke up and took the dogs on a nice hike, which is something that, um, a hobby that I lost while I was with my abuser and something that, you know, I don't do as often as I would like to do, but it's always a joyful experience for me when I do it now in the aftermath. Um, so that's something that I also love to share a lot about on my social media is, you know, taking your life back and getting your hobbies back or trying new hobbies and things like that. I think it's a really important part of recovery. So that's always going to be a success for me and hopefully it is for you as well. So, um, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so recently I was thinking about, oh, I was talking to my mom. I was talking to my mom and I was talking to her about my son's dad, who I co-parent with. And we have a pretty good co-parenting relationship, but like, you know, he's still him and I'm still me. Um, and sometimes we have our moments and I'm just like, what the hell? So I, I'll tell my mom because I don't want to hold it in. Um, I think it's important to process things. Uh, I'm not a big fan of just like venting and not doing anything about it. You know, just venting, I think is important and like a healthy thing to like be able to process it, like journal, like tell a safe friend. So, you know, some, something like that, but, um, I don't like to just like sit in goo and be like, this is where I'm at. Like, I hate this. Like I try to be proactive versus just like complaining. Right. Um, but I was talking to her and I was like, interesting. We started talking about how when I was married, um, and we had a lot of, you know, we didn't have a lot of emotional connection, a lot of misunderstandings and miscommunications. I had a lot of frustration towards the way things were. Um, and I would process those things with her a lot. And my mom's a very generous, like, uh, empathetic person. And she, she would always, you know, see, see where I was coming from. And then also try to help me reach some level of understanding of like, well, you know, this is how the thing that we were all taught to do, which is make excuses and all that stuff. But this is like the most I've really talked about my, my son's dad. Obviously I'm not going to give details about that because, um, I respect his privacy, I guess. Um, but like, you know, she would, she would say like, you know, this is how he is, this is his job. And, you know, you got to remember, you know, he's not you, he's not going to be you. He's not going to think the way you do. He's not going to want the same thing as you do for your child and all that stuff. And so we would have these conversations and she knew exactly where I was. So when I called her and was like, I'm going to end this relationship, she was not surprised. She was like, okay, like people saw it coming. Um, again, not because I was just like out here trashing him and just being like, he's horrible. No, it was just like, oh my gosh, like nothing's working. We're still the same, like all that stuff. And so then fast forward to me being with my abuser. And of course there were times that I would share something. I would share like a frustration, but I never told my mom about the abuse. I never told my mom that they had been physically abusive. I never told them that her, that I spent a lot of time feeling like I was protecting my son from them and the things that they, like the emotional abuse, um, that they would, you know, target at me, target at him, like a lot of manipulation, a lot of, um, like fear tactics and stuff like that. I spent a lot of time feeling like I was a wall in front of my son, protecting him from my abuser without really 
realizing the grand like scheme of what he was experiencing. I just saw always these little moments, much like we do in our own um, experience of the abuse when it's happening. Like when we leave, we're like, wow, that was horrible the entire time. That was really bad. And it's much worse than I like realized it was at the time. Um, so again, I just thought it was like these little moments where maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe they were this, maybe they were that. So I just have to protect him sometimes, blah, blah, blah. And I do this, uh, to be honest, and this is really hard, is I do the same with his dad. Like there's a lot of moments that I'm like, okay, I'm going to um, try to, to find a better approach for that because I don't want to traumatize him. And, and you know, there's a lot of people in this world who who aren't, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm like this, like pretentious and I'm better than everybody else. And I know more than everybody else, but I'm like really working hard to not pass down my trauma to my son. He's going to have trauma. I can't protect him from everything, but you know, there's a lot of people in this world who aren't even aware of their own trauma, let alone the fact that they're handing it down to their kids. So I do, that's one of the things that makes it hard is because there's a lot of people in this world who aren't abusive, but like, aren't, uh, you know, doing the work <laughs> that they could be doing. Let's just put it that way. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm really like, well, I'm better than him and I'm better than you and I'm better than everyone else. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. But it was a lot of, you know, like every once in a while I would tell my mom something. But it was just, you know, and again, my mom would be like, it's just going to sound like my mom's like over here making excuses for everyone's bad behavior. And like, she kind of is, to be honest, like that's how she grew up. Like she'll just say, well, you know, that's how men are, even though she's also like at the same time, like why are men like this? You know, whatever. Like, I don't like all in the news, like, what is this? Whatever. Oh, well, that's how they were raised. Well, it's because they don't have a job that's not fulfilling them. Like maybe if they like, have you talked to them about like trying to get a different get a job like you know i'm sure they would feel better if this just happened you know just always kind of like well like empathy you know maybe this maybe that and so when i called my mom and was like this is happening this is what has been happening like i just let it spill because again at the time that i finally called my mom i felt like my son's life was in danger and perhaps my own because if they took my son i would go after my son and who knows what would go from there because long story short they were they broke into my house. They came into my house without permission, walked in the back door without permission, waited for me to unlock the door and open it to let the dogs out, walked in behind me as I was closing it and targeted my son. They were like, Hey, do you want to come with me to get a donut? I've told this story before. Um, but that was the moment when I was like, mom, this is starting to feel really scary. This is, uh, again, that's post-separation abuse ramping up. That's what we see. And I have talked about that a lot. I will talk about it more. Um, I'm scared. This is what's going on. I don't feel safe. This is how they've been behaving these last couple of days since I left the house. You know, we did break up. Um, I know I told you that we broke up, but I told you that things were okay. They're not okay. And that just started spilling out. You know, a lot of times as survivors, we don't feel we're, we're conditioned by our abusers and also somewhat by society to not tell what's really going on behind closed doors. We protect them. We protect ourselves because we don't want to feel stupid. We don't want to have that stigma on us and all that stuff. And so when I told her, she was, I think, not necessarily in complete shock because she could see that I was not super happy, um, but she had no idea that this person was abusive. I think she just thought this person is just kind of like my son's dad, like living in their own world, um, you know, kind of avo an avoidant personality, um, you know, sort of like, yeah, in a little bubble and has trouble being vulnerable, opening up, like connecting, things like that. Um, and there's a very real difference between being an avoidant person and being an abusive person. Um, and so, you know, with the information that my mom had, for all she knew, like I just had ended up with another avoidant partner and was and was over it, you know. Um, and so that's, I know that that was kind of a long story and I did some little twists and turns there, but my point that I want to to share with you, and of course this is not always the case, Sometimes people do realize they're being abused and they do tell people, or maybe they don't realize it, but they do tell people. And sometimes people who aren't being abused don't share a lot either. So it can be, you know, obviously there's a gray area. And a lot of times when I make abuse content, people are like, that's not always the case. And I'm like, but it sometimes is, and it's important to talk about. So here we go. Um, when you're with an abusive person, you are highly likely to lose your voice. Again, I've said this in this episode, you're conditioned from pretty early on to keep the relationship to yourself. You know, I, I'm a very private person. I don't share a lot on social media. 
I keep my relationship between my partner and I. I don't go around running my mouth, blabbing about, you know, all the struggles. I think that, you know, some things should be kept between partners. And that is true. In a healthy relationship, you don't have to go around telling everyone everything that's going on. But the point is that they're training you, whether explicitly saying it, like the examples I just gave, or whether through, you know, maybe they find out that you told a friend about an argument you had, and then they're going to punish you in some way, shape, or form. They're going to stonewall you for a couple of days, or they're going to tell you, you know, you know, whatever it is, whatever that looks like. So you start to learn that it's best to keep your mouth shut. It's best to not tell people you don't want uh, to have to deal with the consequences of them finding out that you told someone. And then of course you start to learn to, again, protect them. Um, you start to realize that this isn't normal and you're embarrassed um, that by the fact that you quote unquote chose an abusive person, which you didn't, you chose the person that they were showing you in the beginning, which was not abusive. Well, it was, but it wasn't, didn't look like it, right? It looked like a kind person who was really into you and all of that good stuff. We all know about love bombing at this point. Um, and so, yeah, you, you lose your voice, you lose your ability to reach out and, you know, have shoulders to lean on when you're having relationship struggles, which in reality in these situations obviously is horrible abuse. Um, because, you know, if I ever find myself in a healthy relationship again, I want to be able to talk to trusted people around me and talk about, you know, the struggles that we have. And of course, be honoring my partner and the privacy that, you know, the privacy and the respect between us. But I want, like, I think something that's really important is that we all don't just pretend like everything's perfect when it's not. I think that's a really toxic thing that we have been trained to do as a society. We come on social media and we're like, my relationship's perfect and we're only sharing the good times. I think it's important to be vulnerable. I think it's important to like, because you know how lonely it is to have a relationship that's struggling, but then to think that no one else is going through anything because everyone else is pretending that they're fine when they're not. We can all relate to each other and we can all talk about like, you know, relationships are hard. It's a lot of work. They've got trauma. I've got trauma. We're both doing the work. We still have struggles. We have a kid. We're trying to figure out how to, you know, raise the kid better, raise ourselves, you know, do all this stuff, work, bills, you know, all this stuff. It's hard. And then your friends are like, yes, it is hard. We're, you know, we struggle with this as well. Or our struggle is mainly this. And you can relate to one another, you know, while not like bashing the other person and causing a bunch of drama and all that stuff. But you don't get that. You don't get that when you have an abusive person in your life. Um, so think about that. Think about the difference. Um, or if you're listening to this because you've had a friend or maybe your new partner has been abused or something like that, just think about that and think about the differences. Like if you have someone who you suspect is in an abusive relationship now, did they used to talk to you about the relationships that they were in? Did they used to... Um, meet up with you and be like, I'm going to be honest, I'm really frustrated because this person, you know, I've asked them several times and we've tried really hard. We've even had a couple of therapy sessions about this thing. And I still feel like we're at square one and, you know, it's really hard. Anyway, I still love them very much. And, you know, besides that, we have a great relationship, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they're with this other person and they haven't told you anything. You don't really know what's going on. You see pictures of them on social media sometimes and they look happy when they meet up with you, they're like, yeah, you know, we went out and we did this thing and just kind of telling like generic, like stories about this person. But then, you know, they're kind of quiet about everything else when they used to not be, that could be a sign that they have lost their voice and that there's something more going on behind the scenes that they're unable to, or afraid to share. Um, you know, I would hang out with people and I would, act like everything was fine because that's what I was trained to do. Um, and there were moments that I would tell people stuff, but of course, you know, the next time they saw me, I was acting fine. And so those people were like, oh, things must have gotten better. Um, which is another topic that I would really like to talk about because there were a lot of times that I would, um, what I call like crying wolf, even though it actually is wolf, um, where you kind of like reach out to someone and you're like, whoa, I think I could use some help here. And then you pull back because you're like, I can't do that. I can't leave. Um, so I'd like to do a whole entire episode on that um, situation that can happen. But yeah, you know what? That's pretty much all I wanted to share today was just this really big realization of that vast 
like stark difference between an unhappy relationship where I did have a voice and was able to share with my loved ones that I wasn't doing great and that I had struggles and that I would like a different situation. And I did end up leaving and I did get in a different situation, which wasn't good. Um, but like, you know, with this next person, it was all rainbows and butterflies from, I mean, I didn't go around saying that everything was perfect and that we were madly in love. And, um, you know, even on my social media, the people who followed me on Instagram, when I was sharing about my life with them, I did several series. I was doing series. I was calling them series where I would do like a six part, uh, you know, image post where I would share, like, this is a huge struggle in our relationship. This is what we're working on. This is what we're whatever. But again, it was, you know, me gaslighting myself and them gaslighting me into, you know, thinking that we were working on, you know, working through these really hard things as a couple and like, oh, look how hard, like, oh, this is the longest I've ever stayed with someone. Like, this is really something. Um, but I was sharing, like, honestly, like, this isn't great. We're, we're, we're trying really hard here. And in reality, I was losing myself and they were pretending. So again, um, you know. It's uh, it's very interesting to be able to look back on your past relationships once you're removed from all of them. Of course, if you don't know, I've been single since August of 2021, free from my abuser, like no contact since October of 2021. But I, I am single and I'm single by choice and I love it. And this gives me a lot of time to not be distracted by another person, whether good or bad, to really think about, you know, some differences and, and some more ways that you might be able to tell the difference between whether you or someone else is in a healthy relationship or not. Um, Having a voice is important and everyone deserves to have a voice, um, whether you're talking about, you know, what your struggles with a partner or your own struggles or struggles with a family member. We all deserve to have a voice and we all deserve to be supported and validated in all of those things. And, you know, once you have lost your voice, um, getting it back and being able to talk about those things and share those things is an incredible gift. And, you know, once you have that voice back for me, at least it's something that I never want to even consider like risking losing again. Um, which again, like, you know, none of us got into these relationships knowing what we were getting into. But for me, it's like, mm, if I even feel like the tiniest vibe, I'm of like, mm, I don't like that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm sorry. I'm just not. Cause my voice is priceless to me. Um, and yours obviously should be too. So I'm hoping that if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I'm in that second situation where I can't tell anyone anything and I've lost my voice or if you were, I just want you to know that you can get it back and you can get back to sharing with, you know, those special, important people, whatever you're going through. Um, and I would, you know, love to help you, help you get there and love to help you arm yourself and protect yourself from people who would love to, from the Ursulas of the world. For all the people who are like, give me your voice, little one. I'll put it in this little shell and I'll walk around and just destroy everyone around me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and on that, I will end this episode. Uh, I think I babbled a little more than I meant to, but hopefully I made my point here. Um, as I wrap this up, I want to remind you, um, or you know, if you don't know, I, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. As I said in my intro, I'm a certified trauma recovery coach. So if you're stuck in one of those relationships and you can't get out, or, you know, think you might be, or maybe it's a family member, your mom or dad or whatever, and you need help, you know, setting boundaries, or you want some more education or validation or whatever you need from me, I'm happy to help you. Um, you can go to my website, the and click, click on the coaching tab um, and check out my availability and make an appointment if that's something that would work for you. If you are LGBTQ, um, I also do have an ongoing monthly support group with my friend Trey De La Torre. Um, our next uh, group session is February 18th um, at 2.30 Pacific time. I'm in Pacific time. Um, and that's only $20. So you get access to both of us coaches um, and other people who are in the same boat or were in the same boat as you. It's an incredibly supportive group. Our last session was amazing. So we'd love to see you there. Um, and that is all. If you like this episode, you like my podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. I really want to get this into the ears of the people who need it the most. Um, and obviously all of you interacting with my content helps to get the word out there. That is 
the end. I know I've said that several times. Do something nice for yourself. Drink some waters today, and I'll see you all next week.